We all know what fossils are, right? Well, I hope so. But what about living fossils? Well, the scorpion is a prime example. If you think these creatures are scary looking, I wouldn't blame you. They definitely bring those freaky vibes. Scorpions are so old, in fact, that they are as old, or if not older, than modern day trees, which first appeared 400 million years ago. And after all that time, they haven't really changed or evolved their appearance, still looking pretty intimidating. To all my arachnophobia friends watching this, you may not like this fact. Scorpions are actually in the same family as spiders, arachnids. This is because they have eight legs, or four pairs, just like a spider. These legs are pretty important in their own way. They have a lot more functions than the legs us humans have. Each leg is divided into several sections, with the last segment ending in a sharp claw. And that's not all. They also have tiny sensitive hairs that can help them sense vibrations and detect their prey. If you thought scorpions can move fast, you'd be right. Having eight legs definitely makes them have an advantage. Some species like the bark scorpion, native to North America, specifically Arizona, can move up to 12 miles per hour. Pretty crazy for just legs, right? All eight legs are connected to the side of their bodies. And speaking of the body, it divides up into two parts, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. The cephalothorax houses the front part of the scorpion, which includes the legs and one other thing, the big pinchers. Of course, it's not just the legs that are unique, but their two iconic claws, or pinchers, are what I, and what I think most other people would think of when thinking about a scorpion. Unknown to most people, these pinchers are actually modified mouth parts, known as pedipalps, which are used for a variety of things, like grasping, crushing, and manipulating their prey. They are located on either side of the scorpion's head, as seen here. If you thought these pinchers looked like lobster or crab claws, I also wouldn't blame you, they are somewhat similar. These pinchers are far more sophisticated, both in their structure and their function. To dive more deep into these things, starting at the base near the scorpion's head and thorax is the pedipalp, which is another word for the pinchers as mentioned earlier. The pedipalp is made up of several segments, the largest of which is called the manus. Yeah, we are starting to get into some anatomy terms. At the end of the manus is the cella, which is a part we typically think of as the claw or pincher. The manus is the broader, often heavier muscled portion of the pedipalp that connects the rest of the scorpion's body. The manus provides the base of the cella and gives the pincher its strength for grasping or crushing prey. The cella itself consists of two primary functions, the fixed finger and the movable finger. These are the actual jaws that close together to trap, hold, and crush prey. The moving finger is articulated, allowing it to open and close like a pair of pliers. The pinchers itself also have those tiny little hairs scattered around them, just like their legs. Also, one thing I did not mention about the leg hairs is that they can actually help them sense their environment in the dark, since they are actually nocturnal. And speaking of the nighttime, one of my favorite facts is that most scorpions can glow in the dark, but only in a special light spectrum known as ultraviolet light. This is because of a quality called biofluorescence, where organisms light and re-emit it as a different color or frequency. Okay, now the biggest part of the scorpion's body is of course their crazy looking tail with a deadly stinger at the end. The whole thing is called the metasoma, which is composed of body segments. If you've ever seen a rattlesnake tail before, the segments look a little similar. The metasoma also contains muscles and nerves, as do limbs, but also the portion of the intestines. At the very end of the metasoma is of course the stinger, also known as the telson. It contains a bulb-like structure with the stinger at the end. The bulb is where the scorpion's venom is produced, processed, and stored. And we all know that scorpions are venomous, but you may not have known this. Every single scorpion species is venomous. That's around 2,000 species, but only 25 are considered lethal to humans. But back to the stinger. This thing is no joke. It's very deadly. They use their stingers for mostly defense and paralyzing their prey, with them often grabbing their prey with their claws before stinging it. So yeah, once their prey like insects is stunned, they're in trouble. They usually feed every two to three weeks, but of course it all depends on the species and size. They can also go to months and even up to a year without water and food. This definitely gives them an advantage, especially since most species live in hot and dry environments. Thankfully, scorpions don't often sting humans. This is because they are actually afraid of us. So with all this, scorpions are probably way more intriguing than you would have thought at first, at least for me, of course. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.